Hello. Hey, Lauren. Hi. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'm, I'm coming around to glad I'm here. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. yeah. We're getting there. No, I am. Yes. I'm very glad. This is exciting to me. Yes. This is awesome. Um, so we are live on Restream and we've already got some comments coming in, which is awesome. We've got some people joining yes. us and we're Woo. live on LinkedIn, my LinkedIn, your LinkedIn, yeah. Facebook and YouTube. So we're all over is, the interwebs. This is the livest I've ever been. <laughs> You're doing amazing. Um, so thanks for joining us, everybody. We've got uh, Carly with us saying, hey. We've got Michelle saying hello. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Josh saying, happy hump day all. Let's jam. Katie with a hello. A hi from Julie. So awesome. Hi from Chris from Chicago. So glad you're here. Uh, and Emma, hi. It's amazing. We've got uh, Palmyra. Hope I'm saying that right. Happy Wednesday. And Jennifer, hi. So glad I saw this pop up. Oh, so glad you're here. Thanks for being here. And let's see. Uh, we've got Jorge in the audience with us. This is a big crowd tonight. Love <laughs> it. So amazing. Like a little overwhelmed. A little bit yeah, overwhelmed. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Abiodun. We've got uh, Carly's happy to be here and happy to network. Yay, networking. Sarah says hi from DC. Jennifer. Hey, ladies. Hey, Jennifer. Nice to see you. Cam saying, hey, Whew. Susan Steyer. Hello, everyone. Hey, Susan. LinkedIn user. Ah, yes, that is a fun fact with Restream. If you have not given Restream permission to use your name, you will come in as LinkedIn user. So hello from California, LinkedIn user. Uh, let us know who you are in the comments if you wouldn't mind. Um, April saying hi from Orlando. We've got LinkedIn hi, user. Hi, also correct. from Orlando. What's that? I said hi, also from Orlando. Yes, yes. <laughs> Amazing. Whitney saying hello. We've got a good day from a LinkedIn user. Hello from Michigan. I hope you're like legit from Australia because then it means we're worldwide. I'm glad. I'm glad you went there. <laughs> hi from Jackson. <laughs> And from Tallahassee, California again. This is awesome. Happy to network with everybody from Seattle. Amazing. We're at least across the country. Ah, oh, we are around the world. Hello from the Philippines. We made it to the Philippines. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Philippines. And Dale saying good evening to two Laurens. Thank you for recognizing there are two Laurens on the screen. We appreciate it. Um, and a hi from Malaysia. Uh, awesome. Wow. wow. You really are getting all the way around the world. Hi from New York. So cool. Hi from the Bronx. I, we could do this all night. We could just have this be the Wait. hi, where are you from? We actually have somebody from Australia. We do actually have someone from Australia. Awesome. Amazing. Welcome. <laughs> and Utah. Oh, so awesome. That person uh, we are could so absolutely glad be lying about being from Australia, and I would be totally fine with it because yeah, that, they know that made my night. So yeah. whether they're there or not, thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, well, welcome, everybody. If you've never been to a live with me, um, then let me introduce myself. I'm Lauren Lefkowitz. I'm an executive leadership coach and an avid LinkedIn user and an active networker. And uh, I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm in the midst of a 21 day live challenge for myself that nobody asked me to do. And I'm on day <laughs> I'm on day 14 today. So we're we're two weeks in and uh, keeping it going. And um, with me tonight is Lauren Howard, who I met through networking. Convenient. Huh. Convenient. Will you introduce yourself? Yeah, I am Lauren Howard. Um, I am also 
frequently called L2, which very much works in this situation because I am called L2 because I've always been the second Lauren on a team. And so this works. Um, so and you can call me that. You can call me, honestly, you can call me whatever you want. <laughs> I'm not shy. Um, I started using LinkedIn about a year, almost a year ago, not quite. Uh, because I didn't have a network because I left a job that I had been at for five years and didn't think I needed one at the time and then left and went, eh, what am I going to do? Um, I'm a digital health strategist. I uh, work for an amazing company. I run a couple of amazing companies that are that make me happy. We have some communities that I am so happy to have you as part of. Um, we opened a new one today, which is exciting. So lots of things going on and truly 100% everything that has come across my plate has happened because I started using this very foreign, very terrifying to me platform um, that has done lots of magical things to, for me, including introducing me to you. So awesome. Uh, yes, amazing. Um, I wanna get to the story of how we met, but I also wanna acknowledge uh, some, some questions we're getting and some other hellos. Uh, Carly's asking, will we have a chance to network with those in this group? The answer is yes. You have the whole LinkedIn universe. <laughs> so as you're seeing, and this is like a great, it's a great question, Carly, um, uh, because um, that's what LinkedIn is for, right? And we are often so shy to like reach out to people and connect with people. The people who are here are interested in connecting in some way or another. Um, so I say anybody that you see in here that says something you like, or does something you like, or has a name you like, or is from Australia, hit the connect button. Um, I personally, I'm a bigger fan of the connect button than the follow button. Um, and Lauren, I know you are too. Uh, LinkedIn creator mode, which is what I'm in has, um, follow as the default, but it doesn't actually mean we prefer to be followed, even though when you click on connect. LinkedIn is like, oh, Lauren prefers to be followed. Why don't you just follow her? I say connect. So you can also come back to this and see who the attendees were. You can see who's in the comments. And it's a great way to connect with people who are here to connect. So Carly, have at it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, how to connect and how to network and all that as we as we go on. But we've got some more highs. We've got a high from Georgia, Pennsylvania. Uh, from Praveen in Canada. I know the flag and I also know where, where Praveen is. So <laughs> two points for me. Well done. Well done. <laughs> There's a ton of uh, awesome Aussie content creators on LinkedIn. I agree. Yes. Uh, got a woohoo. I should, I should say that with a little more gusto. Woohoo. Uh, we've got Danielle Adams saying, hey, I don't know how to give Restream permission. I, I don't know if there's a link. If anybody knows, let us know in the comments. Help us help us figure that out. Uh, Carl says, kudos to the live challenge, Lauren Lefkowitz. Looking forward to this conversation, Lauren Howard. Awesome. And uh, Shayna loves Lauren Howard. Here for this. I'll just <laughs> step back and take on over. <laughs> I love her too. She is a yeah, ball of positivity. And if I had the money, I would pay her to just follow me around and shout positive <laughs> things at me. That's amazing. Well, I need to make sure I'm connected to her. Uh, we've got <laughs> Hi, Lawrence from Lisa. Uh, let's connect Connect from Kate. Take people at their word when they say let's connect. Just go ahead and connect with them. You don't need to be fancy. We'll talk about sending messages or not sending messages, but just go ahead and do it. Uh, Shayna Brown, love your name from Deshayna. <laughs> nice. Uh, Michelle saying hi to Kate Bays. Hi from Connecticut. Uh, hi from Florida. This is so awesome. Uh, thanks so much. This helps a lot from Linda. Let's connect full stack web developer. I'm not going to go through your skills, <laughs> but th there they are. We've got a Haya from Jory. Jory. Um, please connect from, from Michelle, who is an awesome connector. Uh, Catherine, ask me anything on SEO and metaverse. Catherine is a great explainer and like brilliant. Um, uh, LOL from Shana on her name. We've got a hi from, uh, Sinta, Sinta Yehu. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, hi from New Jersey from Christine. You two ladies are both amazing. Hi, Christine. Amazing. Uh, 
we're not going to be doing job hunting on this call. So I'm, I'm not going to respond to that. Love to connect with anyone in mental health tech or health tech startup space. Awesome to put in the comments what who you're looking to connect with. Um, Teresa, hey, Lauren, glad I popped hey, on. Hey, Teresa. And uh, Linda, you asked for it. We connected for sure. Awesome. Amazing. Um, well, great. Well, let's get to talking. Um, let's tell our story. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. So uh, one day I get a message in LinkedIn um, from Lauren with a note that says, I think you'll really resonate with this post. So I'm reading the post and I'm like, I do actually really resonate with this. And we were connected, but we didn't know each other at all. No. And um, then uh, you sent me a second message that said, <laughs> whoops, wrong Lauren. And I, and I responded, I'm never the wrong Lauren. <laughs> Which is true. You were right. Which is true. Yes. Um, but indeed, you did me to send it to another Lauren. Um, there are many Laurens on LinkedIn. And we just connected from there. And I think I think you just adopted me as your friend. And I yeah, no, I didn't give you a choice. It was forcible yeah. assimilation. Yeah, no, yeah. there was no option. Um, yeah. But since then, we have talked about like really serious friendshipy stuff. We've talked about business. We've uh, supported each other's stuff and each other's business. And um, I'm so glad that we bumped into each other because look at where we are now. I know. Pretty, well, I yeah. think we did. I think we did like an actual on camera Zoom a couple of days later, which I never did at the time. But for whatever reason, I was like, this person seems safe. Um, you know, clearly my judgment. Um, and uh, and then the, the rest was history. Like we literally were like pretty <laughs> like together on everything for since then. It's been probably probably like nine-ish months yeah and we talk every day yeah through we multiple do. modalities at the same mm -hmm. time yeah yeah <laughs> and it's so cool because like for for me i'm a natural networker and we haven't been able to go anywhere for a, a lot of years and i'm also an introvert and like i'm a little shy which people uh find surprising because i can talk for hours um so the going into a networking event for me was always this conflict. I know you you don't like them, but I, it was always this conflict because I want to meet people. I'm compelled to make people feel comfortable. So if I see someone standing by themselves, I'm like, oh, you can help, Lauren. And um, uh, and so that was a great way for me to like get some energy out, make people feel comfortable, meet some people, and then like come home and collapse. <laughs> So for me, virtual networking is like the best of all the worlds. I get to decide what room I walk into. People are welcoming and expecting me. Um, and um, and I don't have to put on hard pants. I can just wear sweatpants. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Which is the real perk of all of it. Let's yeah, exactly. Um, no, I, I agree entirely. And, you know, you and I have had this conversation a number of times. I had no interest in networking before I started on LinkedIn. And if you invited me to an in-person networking event right now, I would be like, you yeah, know, sorry, <laughs> I'm busy. I'm busy wearing soft pants. No, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, because that is still, that is not how I choose to socialize. And not even how I choose to socialize. It's not how my brain works for socialization. Mm -hmm. um, and it never has been. But pre-pandemic, that was weird. And it meant I was antisocial and didn't like people and didn't want to be around people. And there were some other things going on that were impacting my desire to socialize, which I have since worked through. But also, like in general, making real connections or or developing real friendships on the internet was considered not, you know, it wasn't the way you make real friendships. It was the way you meet a screen name. Um, and I always felt that meant that I was not a people person and I wasn't designed to be social. And I'm just, you know, what I've since learned is I'm great with people. I just want to do it on my terms. I want to yes. do it without putting on hard pants. I want to do it where I'm comfortable. I want to do it while I can listen to my kids in the background and, and, you know, have them jump on my lap and crash an event, um, which they 
have done many times. Um, and in my environment, like, yeah, I'll get on a Zoom with you. Yeah, apparently I'll go live with you. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do all of that. But it took kind of being forced into situations like accidentally LinkedIn messaging somebody with the wrong name or very much the right name, depending on how you look at it, uh, right. to figure out that like there was there's nothing wrong with my social skills when I use them the way that I'm comfortable with. And I mean, maybe there is, but like, I found a lot of people who are totally fine with it. So it's working out. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, we got a couple more comments. Uh, I'm going to, um, just because we're getting so much conversation, I'm going to bring up comments as we're talking. If we can relate to them and talk about them, great, it, but we may not get to all of them, but um, you're all important to us. I'm so glad you're all in the Very, audience. very important. So amazing. Yeah. Um, so tell me like, when you join LinkedIn, um, I love these ones that say I recently started following Lauren because both of us are going to assume it's us. Yeah. It's me, obviously. Um, <laughs> um, so you joined LinkedIn and what was your like intention? What was like, how did you start connecting with people and talking to people? Because that feels awkward for a lot of people. Yeah, no, you're, it, it was awkward, 100%. Um, I had a lot of nervous energy. I had just left a job. Um, I had no plans and my plan was to have no plan, but having no plan made me nervous. And so I needed to find some way to control all of this. No plan. This um, control issues are not well documented in my psyche whatsoever. Um, and so I started using LinkedIn because I was like, where else do you find a bunch of people who you can connect one to one with who are in your space? Um, and the other side of it was like, I had been in a silo for five years. I knew what my company had been doing. I knew what we were doing in the market, but I didn't know what was happening in the market as a whole because there was no time for that. And so I just wanted, I really just wanted to reach out to people in my space in digital health and healthcare and telehealth and mental health and just say like, Hey, I'm a human who exists and I would love to know what you're doing. No agenda. Can we just meet up? Um, and I was fortunate in that I had a pretty well-established history in the space and they could see that I had a lot of experience in the space that I was connecting on. Um, and so people were great about it. I mean, the number of people who had no business talking to me, who they had nothing to offer me aside from a kind word, uh, mm -hmm. who got on the phone with me in that first month. I mean, when I say I talked to probably 30 people on the phone, like that might not even cut it. Um, and through LinkedIn and messages and connecting with people and just being like, I have to do something with my hands or I'm going to explode. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where I started. And it didn't occur to me that I was going so far out of my comfort zone because I was physically uncomfortable and I was doing something to calm that. Right. Um, and also people were just really nice, like not a single person. The people who didn't answer might have been like, who is this chick? Um, mm -hmm. But the people who did answer, which was a lot of people, were super kind. And that was, that set me on a path to be like, oh, maybe this is not as scary as I think it is. Um, and so I was glad that, obviously I was glad that was my experience. But like, when I say my entire life came from just being like, I need to do something with my hands. That's where everything I have right now came from. That's amazing. I was, um, I have a little bit of a different story, which is that, um, you know, I had all of my coworkers connected to me on LinkedIn right? That was, it was like my roster of people I knew. Um, and I uh, started looking for another job because I wasn't happy in HR anymore. I didn't realize that. I, I thought I wasn't happy in my job. I wasn't happy in HR anymore. And um, so I, I sort of dipped into LinkedIn to look and I realized there were actual conversations going on. And then like I waited another year. <laughs> And then I started coming in and just sort of dabbling and unfollowing people who were doing stuff I wasn't interested in and um, following people. I wasn't really connecting to people. Uh, I was scared of it, um, but I was commenting on stuff and um, I would comment on something and then that person would connect with me. And often without a message, without a like, here's the reason I wanna connect with you. Um, and that I think is like a best kept secret that most people who are active on LinkedIn don't really care why you want to connect with them. They just also want to connect. Now, if you say gross things, 
right after I connect with you or while I'm connecting with you. If you try to sell me Bitcoin or Forex or get me into your multi-level marketing company or sell me coach services, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, going to tell you no thanks. And <laughs> we may or may not stay connected. Um, so uh, what is it? The, what is it called? Pitch slapping? when somebody comes right into your DMs and, and starts trying to sell you. Um, and, uh, and what I realized was like, oh, people are waiting for me to reach out to them too. It's not just that I comment and then I wait and see if they like me enough to connect with me. This is a two-way street. And I started connecting with people and I started seeing stuff I liked. Um, and then I built from there. So I wasn't posting right away. I don't know if you were posting right away, but I wasn't posting right away. I was I was commenting and following and just sort of getting a feel for how everything worked. Um, and then I got I started getting confident enough to connect. Um, but uh, I I would love to talk to hear your perspective on like how do you go from I don't know this person at all to getting on a call with them. Like, what are the steps and what makes it for you that you want to take a call with someone or that you think someone's going to want to take a call with you? Um, you know, it depends on it depends on the intent. So, you know, I, I have my hands on obviously have my hands on a lot of different things. I have a lot of women who reach out to me and say, like, I'm in a crummy situation and I don't know what to do and I can't talk about it publicly. Can we get on a call? And if that's been somebody who has been engaging with my content and has kind of proven that they're like actually a human and not a bot and that there's not a sales pitch just behind that. Uh, please do not use that as a segue to a sales pitch. You will lose my respect forever. Um, those people, we I get on the phone with all the time. And usually my answer is absolutely, here's my Calendly link. Um, because I don't need, you know, I'm getting on the phone with you. It's I'm not marrying you. So I don't, I don't need to know your, your entire backstory. If you're telling me that what you need aligns with one of the things that I do, then great. Um, I have a lot of people reach out who are in early stage startups that need help. And um, those, that's a pretty low bar for, you know, for vetting. Um, because a lot of times they're, I know they're not going to turn into anything, but that early stage for startup chaos for overexcited founder syndrome is exhausting. And I know how to deal with that. So I will give those people a half an hour of my time all the time. Um, but I think the, the real difference is when someone comes to me for help or for just, you know, they need to know what to do next in their career. If they've shown up a number of times, or they send me a message that proves to me that they've actually been following me. And there are things, you know, I have a lot, I probably have more than the average number of lurkers. Um, and that's not a criticism, but I post about some like difficult, heavy stuff or, really stuff that people don't talk about, whether it's in the the corporate experience or the female experience or, or the startup experience. And so the reality is there are people who follow me for like months before they will even comment or who are still too scared to comment because they don't want their employer to see. And mm -hmm. those usually come into my DMs and those often become friendships and relationships. Um, and so, you know, I, my bar is not that high. Just prove that you've been like hanging around for a bit and that you're a genuine real person and that it's about the connection and not about whatever your end goal is. Like, I probably don't have a job for you. Sometimes I do, but I probably don't. So if that's not your intent and there's just something about what I put out into the universe that attracts you, I do it for a reason because mm -hmm. I know that a lot of people are working in struggling through isolation because everybody thinks what's happening to them is only them. And it's very rarely only them. Um, so it's not even a very high bar. And for actually connecting with me, like it's a very, it's very difficult to get connected with me. What you have to do is hit the button. And then I say, yes. <laughs> and it's very difficult. So if you, those are two very difficult steps. Um, but yeah, my, I don't have a whole lot of, high standards for who I connect with. If I can tell you're an actual human person, you're probably going to get through. Yeah. It's okay, Teresa. Um, <laughs> we're glad you're back. Connect with me, Teresa. Um, hey, Ashwin. Uh, so um, my philosophy is like, I will basically connect with anybody. 
as long as they look like a real person. If there's like a photo of Cameron Diaz, it's going to make me think maybe your name's not actually Joey Smith. Um, but you know, here we are. So I generally will connect with anyone. Um, I'm a little discerning about who I'll talk to, which is not to be snobby. Um, there's a lot of action in the coach world of like, let's talk so we can see how we can help each other grow our businesses. And so I'll, um, and, and it's not that I don't want to talk to other coaches. I love other coaches, other coaches. If you're here, I love you. Um, and, and I like to collaborate with people, but there's a tone in some of the messages that's like, you send me people, I'll send you people. And that's not really how good coaching works. Um, and then there's a lot of like coach growth programs and, and like people making a living they're, you know, legit people. Um, but it, if it's clear that you're selling to me, I'm going to say, no, thank you. And I also don't like to be publicly called out. There was someone the other day who I connected with who posted on my, uh, uh, commented on my post, um, let's go live together. Like we hadn't met, we hadn't talked to each other. We don't know each other's philosophies. And I responded like he was kind, you know, he wasn't pushy about it, but I responded like, Hey, not yet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's get to know each other first. Um, so I like to have like a little bit of, of knowing each other, or you commented on my stuff, like you said, or you tell me why you want to talk to me. Like, I will give you a half hour of my time. I will come to your group, whatever. I'll come talk at your, uh, you know, at your conference, whatever it is. Um, but I, I kind of want to know why. So if somebody, you know, just says hi or um, nice post or something like that in the, in, in my DMs, I don't like to work hard to say like, hey, wh hey, what do you, what do, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> So I, I have a hard time responding to the DMs that are just like, hey. Oh, I, I don't. It, it, yeah. Um, and I also miss miss them sometimes. You know, like LinkedIn gets busy. And oh, if I yeah. have those, those crazy, um, I might miss some messages. And, you know, LinkedIn's not great at keeping messages on red. And like, you know, it's like a bad inbox. Yeah. Um, so what would you say to people who are like, I'd really like to connect with this person, but I feel like I've reached out or I feel like I've commented a bunch of times and I sent a DM and I never heard anything back. Like, what's the line between give up, she doesn't want to talk to you and follow up because you might have something in common? So that's a super good question. One thing I'll say is I miss a ton of direct messages, like a ton of them. And I wish I didn't. And I hate it because there's like people send the sweetest things in my direct messages, but I have an, an auto reply set up because of it, because I know I miss them and it's got my email on it. Because if you really want to get to me and it's not that hard to find, um, email is just more reliable. And so I set that up because I do feel bad when I miss them. Um, I also tell people all the time, like, bug me i don't care like that's me like odds are i had swiss cheese brain that day and whatever the information was fell out and bump it so that i can see it again um and that's obviously preferred because i don't i don't ever want to miss somebody um but you know i think there are a couple of things that i have come across in the last year almost year that i that are really important to say first nobody owes you a response like, unless you lent the money, nobody owes you a response. And so that's the, that's kind of the give and take here. Like you are putting yourself out there to try to make connections and there's a chance you either silently or, or directly get rejected. That's fine. Like that's mm -hmm. part of the deal. Um, but beyond that, I think people are busy and the real freedom that I found when I finally kind of got out of my own way and got over myself and my anxiety about it was not only that nobody, you know, it, it, the reality is you're worried what somebody's thinking about you. And I guarantee they're not thinking about you. You mm. know, they're thinking about their own stuff. You're, yeah. you're busy with yourself. And we have this whole projection of what people are going to think about us if we do things. And like, if you're more than a 10 second blip on their brain, like, that's really good. You did something to annoy them because that's just, that's not the way 
people work, we're all busy, we all have so much stimuli, I guarantee they're not thinking about you. So is it okay to send a message every couple of weeks to try to bump things? Yeah, it's taking five seconds out of their day. As long as you're polite, courteous, acknowledge the fact that, you know, maybe they're not interested and this is just important to you. And here's the reasons why you really want to reach out. And what's the worst that's going to happen? They're going to continue to ignore you. I guarantee they're not forming an opinion about you because that you're, they're not thinking about you. And so that's not meant to make you feel small because you are not small, but it is meant to give you the freedom to get out of your own head and just not worry so much about what other people think. Because the other side of that and the hardest thing that I've worked on in the last year to really find my place in all of this is what somebody else is thinking about me, if they are thinking about me, is not my business. Mm. That's for them. And so you put those two things together and it's just like, just, just do it. What's the worst that's going to happen? Somebody's going to get irritated that you DM'd them for the third time in six weeks? Oh, right. darn. Yeah. Like, if the worst outcome is not worse than where you are right then, what's the problem? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I try. I really try to, like, go back through my messages um, and resp- at least respond, like, no, thank you, if somebody's trying to tell me something. or. Um, uh, and I don't want to miss anybody. And if there is something that we could possibly have in common, even if it's that like, we're both hilarious and we should have a conversation, then like, I'm there for it. Um, uh, but I think, uh, and Jonathan said it, um, I put it up while you were chatting, but I know Jonathan does a lot of work helping job seekers and, um, employers match up, yep. um, and, and get connected. And he does a ton of work for that. And so when he's posting for this stuff, people are DMing him all the time. It's, there are days when, you know, you, and I'm sure you get this too, like something goes viral or semi-viral and you've posted something vulnerable and people DM you instead of commenting because they don't want to add themselves for whatever, you know, you just got willing enough to share. Um, And it like, my heart hurts if I don't get back to somebody who has taught you know, who wants to talk to me about that. Um, and I just like get overwhelmed sometimes with messages. So if you're out I had there, a post. I miss you, I apologize and reach out again. I had a post two days ago. I think it was two days ago. What day is it? Um, that really like had, it had like 200,000 views in a day and it was, it was very raw. And I don't, sometimes I don't realize how raw these things are when I'm writing them because writing is such a disconnected process to me, except when I'm writing about my dad, um, that sometimes I share these things and people are like, people are like, this is so vulnerable. And I'm like, was it? I just remember it as kind of like a story that's in my head. I forget that it's like a real thing that happened to me. And it always is because it, that's just the way my writing process is. But I've got, when I say hundreds, hundreds of responses from primarily women, but there were a fair amount of men too, saying, I can't say this publicly because I'm under an NDA. I can't, Mm. you know, I'm scared to say anything about this because I don't want my job to retaliate. I don't want anybody to know, but this happened to me too. Thank you for pointing it out because people pretend like it's not a thing and it definitely is a thing. And I wanted to respond to every single one of those, but like, I have a job (laughs) and, and, because of LinkedIn, I have a job, but also I have a job and for it, I use LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. And so I can't spend my whole day responding to DMs. And when they are from a place of like somebody being vulnerable back, which I get a lot. I mean, I get way more people kind of inherently trust me, which like maybe bad, maybe bad judgment. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I can't, I don't want to respond with thanks when somebody has just said like, you you ripped open a scab for me because this has been a really hard thing and I didn't realize it was still affecting me. Like I want to give a real empathetic response and encourage them to join the resources that we've put together and Mm -hmm. let them know about all of the options and things that they can do and tools that are there. And that doesn't come from a quick 10 second, thanks for messaging me. Like that's not, I don't, put those posts up so I can give you a form response. And so sometimes it takes me a while. Sometimes I miss them. I love when people send me something that's that's personalized and empathetic and empathetic to themselves. 
And then when they don't get a response, come back a couple of days later and say, hey, I just want to make sure you saw this because I do want to respond. It's just there is one of me and I'm learning that. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. a new thing that I'm working on is the whole there being one of me thing. Yeah. It's um, there's like a, a people pleaser who still lives deep inside of me who's like, you should set aside time every day to get back to everybody for everything. And like, including the pitch slappers, like my, my brain is like, you owe them a response. Um, and so that's the thing that I'm working on. Like for me, sometimes it's a milestone to not respond to every message. Um, but what would you, what would you say? Like, let's say that somebody reached out to you with a vulnerable post, uh, after a vulnerable, vulnerable post. Um, and then they get your auto response that says to email you. Do you want them to email you? Is that like, just, you know, like what, what's your hope for people who really want to talk to you, I guess is the question. Um, if you really want to talk to me, like really, and you want to build a relationship, I will see your email more likely than I will see your DM. I try to see DMs. And if I'm staring at the screen when they come in, I will respond to them in real time. Uh, but that doesn't happen that often. Well, it does, but sometimes I get like 12 at once. Um, so yeah, no, my email is there, so you'll use it. And there was a point in time when I was, when I was actively looking for people to fill out a couple of teams I was working with. And I didn't respond to all of the DMs, but mm -hmm. I put my email there. And when people didn't use it, I was like, that's a critical thinking problem. <laughs> I literally gave you a way to reach me use the email. It's right there. Mm -hmm. I want to see you take that initiative and advocate for yourself in a way where you're just grabbing my email because it's right there. I didn't put it there because I don't want people to use it. Um, yeah. it's, it's in my banner, like at the top of my LinkedIn, my email's right there. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I have it there because I do want to connect with people and I do want to put my money where my mouth is but it's really hard to do it through DM. So if, yeah, you can always find me via email. I read my email more than I do like anything else. I'm constantly checking my email. It's a problem. I shouldn't do it, but it's the reality. So it's not hard to find me there. Yeah. Um, so if I'm like a new person who has just come to LinkedIn and I'm super overwhelmed because I just see this sea of people, um, and, uh, and I just like, I, you know, like, I feel like when I first came onto LinkedIn and tried to sort it out, I was a little bit paralyzed by it. Um, what would you tell people to do first? Comment. Like, let people yeah. be nice to you. Be yeah. nice to other people. My, I, yeah. my, the formula that I tell people to use on LinkedIn is give exponentially more than you take. So, so is, comment how much and like, how often, and what do you say? Um, you just bring your whole self to whatever it is. I mean, be, be kind, always lead with kindness and always lead with positive intent. If somebody posts something that is antithetical to what you believe, you could disagree with them, but do it with kindness. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are, you know, there are ways to spark real debates that way, or not even debates, just conversations. That's how you get past a disagreement is to lead with kindness. And so that's fine. Um, but that's really how I started was just, you know, I was also very scared. I thought posting would make people think I was totally self-centered. And again, nobody was thinking about me. So didn't matter. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't crossing anybody's mind, so it was fine. Um, but before that I would comment a lot on people's posts commenting, connecting, just getting some visibility. And in, in the LinkedIn world, like comments are currency mm -hmm. that, that your comment gives somebody else visibility. Your comment yeah. gives somebody else inspiration to keep doing it in some capacity. And so that is giving a lot, like you might not be able to afford their services. That's fine, but comments are free and that mm -hmm. helps them and they appreciate it. And it's a very symbiotic environment where people appreciate when you help them because your comment will turn into revenue for them in some way. Mm -hmm. It will help them in their career in some way. And so that's why it's so, that's why that's probably the most important thing you can do. Like if posting's outside of your realm, cool, I get it. Like it took me a long time. Um, but 
commenting is just you showing up and agreeing or disagreeing or thanking somebody for their perspective. And yeah. from a comment that can turn into a conversation, which can turn into a connection, which can turn into a, maybe a business relationship, maybe accidentally DMing somebody and getting like a good friend out of the deal, um, whatever. But that's really like, that's the currency that you have an unlimited amount of mm -hmm. is commenting. Yeah. Um, and I like robust commenting. Now, like writing comes easily to me. So, and I know it does to you too. So like I can look at a post and I can start a conversation in the comments. And I know that's not easy for everyone, but I like to imagine like actually being in a room one-on-one -on -one with somebody having like saying like, how's it going? And having them tell you a story about burnout at work or about um, their kids or about, you know, work is really hard. And <laughs> And then your comment being the thing that they hear and that's the end of the conversation. So like if I write this long vulnerable post about burnout and you're like, agree, it falls so flat, <laughs> you know, like I want to- You agree I, that burnout is bad? Yeah, right. <laughs> Groundbreaking. Yeah, or like great post. Like that makes me feel like great story, Lauren. You know, like it almost feels sarcastic. So when you're posting, like, just imagine you're actually having a conversation with a good friend. And like, what would you say to them? Like, get vulnerable back. You don't have to tell your whole story. And not everybody's comfortable with that. A lot of people are not. And that's totally okay. But to say, like, I understand that. And that must have been hard. And it's so great that you've come out the other side or whatever it is. Or like, I see that you're struggling sending you a virtual hug. Like, all of that is totally normal and okay. And, and conversational. Um, and I always imagine like when I, when I see a comment, that's just like, thanks or great that like, that that's how the conversation goes. And that that's like such awkward <laughs> person networking. <laughs> what it actually is, is one of those like liquid things that just dips down and hits the button on the, on the scroll screen. So somebody's just scrolling mm -hmm. and it goes, dink, fine, yeah. dink, thanks, dink. Yeah. That's all it is. And then for me, when I started um, commenting, I would save my comments. Um, uh, <laughs> thanks, Lee. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who don't know me, my thing is fine as a trap. And I <laughs> I have heard fine a bunch. I've actually said fine tonight. It's 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 all good. It's fine. Um, I actually uh, said it like six times before this live when my tech wasn't working. Right. Um, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, I, um, I saved my comments and when I got confident enough and you can go into your own posts and activities and find your old comments, but it gets messy. Um, and what I found was that like later on when I got more comfortable posting, some of those comments could become posts. Like I could turn them into posts. Um, and that was a good, um, a good way to uh, like create my own stories um, because what I comment on is stuff I relate to or people I like, but it's mostly stuff I relate to. Um, and uh, so that's a great place to start. And somebody mentioned a couple of comments up about um, your headline, which is so key because if your headline just says like customer service representative, like great, that's your job. That's what you do. I want to know like who you are. What are you passionate about? Who do you support? What's What do you talk loudly about? Um, and that makes it more interesting for me to be involved uh, in a conversation. Um, we're getting compliments. This is a great night. This is um, bad for me. It's just getting so big. Yeah. I know. How are you going to fit your head through the door after this is over? I don't know. I'll probably have to open the second French door because otherwise I'm just going to like smack it on both sides. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Um, so, Actually, one uh, of the things one of the things that I wanted to say because the people are always concerned about how to create content or they they feel like they don't know how to get to the next content piece. One of the things that I've done to challenge myself to kind of kickstart my brain is I will go through and look for comments or posts that I agree with, disagree with, whatever, like the saving comments thing and um, 
challenge myself to find one that I can turn into a post topic. It doesn't necessarily have to be written right then, but mm -hmm. there is a huge amount of content living in what's already in your feed and it will get you out of this kind of writer's block that comes from the pressure to create content, which makes you never create content. Right. Yeah. And I say post off the cuff, you know, like, I was real careful early on with, should I post this? I would let things sit for a little while before I posted it. Um, and now what I realized was the posts that I was the most scared to post that were like really about like the deep, dark inside of me <laughs> um, are the ones that I get the most reaction from because I'm being the most myself, right? Um, I think, in fact, I, I think my first couple of posts were like job seeking how to's I and mean, they got no engagement because like nobody's actually looking for the how to's they want, they want their questions answered, but like, that's not what people are here for. They're here to know other people. Um, and that was, that was a powerful shift for me to be willing to talk about more real stuff and to be willing to talk about me and my clients without identifying them, of course, um, and like what I do and why I do it, why I'm here. Uh, and um, it's made me better connections. Like a bunch of people in the comments tonight are people that I consider friends uh, or future friends um, because I they comment, I see their names and I'm like, oh, I remember what he or she or they said about me uh, or commented on and they resonate with me. Um, so if you're interested in, people and you're interested in what people are saying and you're interested in their posts, a good way to make sure you see their stuff is to ring their bell, which is, if you don't know, you go to their profile, you click on their profile, you have to be following them or connected to them. Um, but if you're not connected and you hit the follow or you or you hit the connect and they accept, um, and I always, if I'm connecting, if I'm requesting to connect with somebody, I will then also follow them. So I'll connect first and then I'll also follow them so that like I'm, I'm at least in their stuff. And then you can ring the bell and your notifications, LinkedIn's still sort of working it out, but your notifications a lot of times will um, show that they've posted or put at least put them in your feed. Um, and uh, it's a good way to get started on like curating what you get to see. Um, so we've missed some some juicy comments here along the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, comments you can also about <laughs> comments, which is meta. So, sorry, it's com they're comments about comments, which is very it's a meta. Comment about copying and pasting comments for future content that other people will comment on. It's very meta. It's like an onion. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. And don't worry what people think about you because they're going to think about you in that moment. They're going to decide if they resonate with your post or not, and then they're going to go away. And if they didn't feel anything about your post, they're just probably not going to come back. Um, uh, and um, Catherine is saying, uh, explain why you do what you do, which I love because I'm about to ask you about your why, Lauren. <laughs> uh, one more comment from Lee. Um, and yeah, so let's talk about why. Like, why are you here on this earth? Why do you do what you do? Who do you care about? I know it's a big question. So um, philosophical. But like, what bring what wakes you up every day and brings you to LinkedIn and has you caring? Well, what usually wakes me up every day is a three year old. Um, unrelated to LinkedIn, but that's how it works. Um, her sister is a much better sleeper. I don't usually see her until well after nine. Um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was a very different version of myself before I started using LinkedIn and I, you know, not all of that obviously has to do with LinkedIn. I was, you had to get out of some situations and rethink my whole attitude toward, you know, work and, and fulfillment and satisfaction and happiness. And there was lots of stuff that went on, but uh, LinkedIn is pretty much the first thing I do all day. It, I need to get the post either written or finished or ready to go. I try to post by eight every morning because uh, that's when there's nobody bothering me. I don't have phone calls and things happening that take my attention, um, except occasionally a three-year-old, but always a three-year-old. That's fine too. Um, but I will say that 
the supportive, genuinely supportive environment, the, the number of people who I can reach out to and just be like, Hey, tell me I'm great on days where I'm not having a great day or uh, who just are there to make me laugh or mm -hmm. who genuinely want to know how I'm doing. I'm, I've never been a person with a lot of friends. I'm painfully introverted and getting me out of my head is nearly impossible. I'm like, my husband could write a book on it. Uh, and um, the fact that I not only like have a place where I go and technically socialize all day every day, but that I want to do it mm -hmm. uh, has really changed my whole perspective on life. Like, le like I'm, that's not being dramatic, life. Um, and so that's really what networking did for me. And I don't think I, I was really looking at it from a business perspective as much as I was from like a personal development, career development, what do I want to do next? Who do I want to be perspective? Um, but I have a consulting business that's incredibly successful now because of it. I have, I run three communities that are successful. Well, one of them is successful as of 10 o'clock today when it launched, but it's still successful, it's still open. Um, uh, because of it. And I can spin up a business in like literally 24 hours. We started the one we launched this morning yesterday evening. Um, and that's what I like to do. I like to build and go play. And this has given me a sandbox where I can do it all the time, every day, all day, every day. Nobody's yeah. telling me I can't. And when I talk to my people in uh, like to my community here, nobody ever tells me no. They're, they're always like, yeah, let's go do it. How can I help? And that's mm -hmm a completely game-changing environment. Yeah. Uh, tell everyone about your communities. Oh, I wasn't planning to do that, but okay. Um, so <laughs> we have three communities. Uh, the first one that we started was the High Rise. My first member of the High Rise was um, Lauren Lefkowitz. And uh, <laughs> the High Rise is, uh, it is a community for women who um, have want to change their perspective on working while female and want to kind of work through what we've it's, it's about deprogramming honestly mm -hmm. about taking all of the uh bs that has been you know layered on top of us in the workplace and just figuring out how to be authentically ourselves in the workplace without the kind of crushing implications of a lot of things that we take with us to the workplace that are not accurate or required um, and we do a lot of hard work in there. We talk about tough things, but we also like share really dope memes. And so it's fine. Uh, there's balance. And it's, it's such a wonderfully, incredibly supportive group of women. Like I get as much out of this as I think any of the group members do because they're so compassionate and lovely and wonderful. Um, and uh, I can't, you know, I know it's my group, but I really can't say enough about it. Like even if it wasn't my group, I would think it was the absolute best group of people. Um, so please come join us. Uh, the second one is called Build by L2. It is for it is a virtual co-working space for entrepreneurs. Um, you know, people who work in corporate environments have all sorts of experts that they can just go ask things um, when they're working on projects. Entrepreneurs don't have that. It's usually us sitting alone in our offices. Um, so Build is a virtual co-working space. We have um, experts in a bunch of different fields. We have attorneys. We have branding, marketing, um, coaching. Uh, everything you can possibly think of finance it cloud design cloud architecture and you can just go and ask questions about anything about your business and talk to smart people who know how to fix it and who are experts and who are there to help um and it's been a really cool environment it's it's uh growing much faster in the last couple of weeks which is amazing um and then super fun just just awesome place to again more dope memes so many yeah. dope memes um <laughs> Also, way more dad jokes in build than in the high rise, but we should fix that. Um, then last but not least, today we launched Bridge by L2, um, which is uh, a third community and it is for job seekers who are transitioning from one field to another and who are struggling with the idea of how to communicate their transferable skills and finding people who will quote unquote, take a chance on them. Nobody is taking a chance on you. You can do lots of things that are not in your job title. I hate that idea. But that's how people feel when they're, you know, a teacher trying to go into project management or a retail manager trying to go into logistics as if retail management is not all logistics. Um, 
you know, all sorts of things like that. And people just feel like they can't get through. And I have a hiring platform that is one of my pet projects that is going to be a long, long process. And so um, I had so many people who reached out to me when they, when we had a, a thing for job seeking like two months ago, and I just kind of felt like nothing was like, we weren't getting anywhere for them. And so mm -hmm. we launched that. We had a ton of signups today. It's a super cool environment. I can't wait to spend more time with these people and connect them with people who can help them on their search and, um, and just be a people person, how I am a people person, which is at a distance. Like I will, I will run across the ocean for you if you need, but I will probably not meet you for coffee ever. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for sharing all of those. Um, I'm in all the communities and uh, they're great. They're just really kind, thoughtful, uh, expert people in being human. And um, it's amazing to have community in a world where we're all sort of um, separated by either because we're working from home or we're back in the office, but we're not seeing friends and family. Um, and so it's uh, all three communities are just like so awesome and so supportive. Um, and, uh, and for me, I'm a, uh, I said it at the beginning, I'll say it again. I'm an executive leadership coach, uh, formerly HR, which somebody said at the beginning, uh, that they were sorry, I didn't like HR. And I just want to clarify. I love, you love HR. <laughs> I loved my HR career for 15 years. I loved every company I worked for. Uh, I was in HR for 20 years. <laughs> and so there was a five year gap where I was working myself to death, uh, 80 to 100 hour work weeks and um, doing it because I was trying to find what I liked and trying to please all the people. And I interim managed all the departments. And then I finally realized that I was in the wrong career for me at that point. And took what had been a side gig for many years in coaching and made it a made it a business. And that's what I do now. So um, I love talking to people who want to transition from an, one career to another um, because or just to find like joy in work. Right. That's why I find as a trap is my is my slogan. It's like it sucks to be fine. Fine's not actually fine. And we all deserve better. We all deserve to find joy in our lives and our work um, and, in, and in community and in each other. Um, yeah. So uh, on that note, thank you so much for this like awesome conversation, the crazy chat. It's the most active chat I've ever had on a live. It's been so much fun. I can't believe I just did a live. I'll be honest. I can't That's believe really you just did a live. Right now. Really I swear to you, I would never do this. And <laughs> here I am. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, we've got a question. What's the website for the career change? Bridgeby2.com, but shoot me a message on LinkedIn and I will send you the actual link. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. We so appreciate you. This has been so much more fun being a group conversation uh, than it even would have been with just us two. And we're so glad to have you in our community. And thank you for being here. Have an amazing night. Bye, guys.